All right, everybody. So I've gotten a little bit more done. Um, I was able to get these guys mounted. There's a lot of stuff I'll be blowing out. This is still just fitting things in place. I decided the best spot for this was to just drill a hole through the board in a spot that wasn't being used anyway and mount it through that board. So the relay is sitting here. I have had a couple of nice standoffs that are high, so I can keep the switching noise away from the actual signal. But the good thing is, as well as one of the switches is uh, going to be a ground. I think that's a ground for other things as well. So I'll just be able to run a wire from there to there. Uh, the other ones, I think one of them comes out right here, so I'll just bring that up to here, and the other one will be very nearby as well for the as well. So, and I, you can probably see from here, I've jumped underneath the crisscross pattern that you'll probably look at when you see the switching part. I can show that to you actually right here. There's a a crossover switching right here. Uh, that X is on the bottom side, so underneath here you can see the wires. I've just crisscrossed those. That does the switching between ground and not for the two channels. So, uh, and then I will just run the you know the five volts are going to come out of this here come up and hook into either side of this guy. And I'll just run those down under and kind of pop them up at it. But I did want to keep that DC side a little bit away from the signal path because that's also, I think, where some of that switching popping can happen. Then I will bring in, of course, my my, my heaters will come into here and then I'll jump them back down to pop into this guy as well for the power supply of this. So this is all positioned now. I'm going to be basically pulling, I'll be leaving those there. I did put the resistors in place, the dropper resistors. So my main power will come off of this. I'm going to have to get some extensions because they don't quite reach. And although this this is one modification because of my transformer, this is a bit different transformer. In the If you look here, you've got four rectifier diodes and you connect them in in a specific way and then back out but the problem with that here is that um i have to use a full wave bridge rectifier to do this so i'm going to actually instead bring my inputs into the middle here and i will ground the bottom side and then the b plus will come out that top side anyway as it was uh and i'm i may also throw in some 0.001 1k uh capacitors around those as well that are just designed to kind of help spread the uh current through that but at any rate, so that will be a slight variation, but just because the particular transformer I have, it's better to use a full wave bridge rectifier than a just a standard bridge rectifier. So, uh, and then um, you know the output will come across. It will hook into this guy, and it doesn't really matter which which order I go in per se because it's just got to have input and output. Uh, so I might just um, basically bring it from here to here. Then this is jumped. So that's the two fifty in in parallel uh, that gives it. Um, basically 100 microfarads of capacitance. That is supposed to be in between the this guy. I've ground, uh, so this this is this is the um, fuse. So there'll be a, this fuse is gonna go between here and here. So I'll run a line from there to this fuse and then from this fuse back to here. This is the choke between those two. And then I'll have a dropper resistor after that. And then another dropper resistor after that. And then this will co uh, come off as well to the different points on the board in here. And then I have two dropper resistors that go on the board as well here and here. So, um, but I've got that all set up. I'm going to go ahead and pull these back out and, and go from there. I did notice one other problem I have. The size of this capacitor that I'm using at this last stage is really big. And it doesn't fit. If you can see, it's larger than those two eyelets that are kind of beneath it there. So I'm debating. Either I'm going to have to try and drill another eyelet a little farther down, which to, in my kind of estimation here, if I kind of bend this out of the way a little bit, would be... Um, on almost the same level as this eyelet, so I just kind of jump it over here a little bit. But that also gets the ground to that pretty close to this, so I don't know. Or I might just try and angle it over, because this is the ground it connects with the jumper underboard with. I just don't know how pretty that's going to look, having this kind of sitting there with an angle clear across a couple of other things. So I might not do that, because it'll look ugly. So anyway, I'll figure that part out. So uh, I did get a good suggestion from someone, and that's why I decided to keep these here. One of the, on my last video, somebody said, it's always good to keep your filtering away from your preamp signals. So, you know, I'd said I might put one of them kind of up here. I, I realized that is a good idea to just keep them away. So there'll just be a line running from here to here to here, and, and then there'll be specific lines coming into the spots only where they need to go. So I'll probably just run those along up, under, and then connect in, connect in, connect in, down as we go. So that way I can keep just the single filtered line for each specific area running across this top edge. And the good thing about that as well is that means I have to keep my uh, my B plus out and away from everything pretty much, except where it comes in. And then we'll have the tube sockets. I'll put those in and you'll see that in a bit. But I'm going to go ahead and strip all everything out except these. These are in good positioning. Uh, I'll pull these all out, and then uh, you'll see me uh, afterwards. I'll have the uh, tube sockets for the preamp tubes in and a few other things and whatnot in the next shot. So there's the first next step. All right. So now I've got, as I'd mentioned, I've got, I haven't got the main power line that will come over here and without thinking I soldered, which is kind of dumb, but, um, well, I guess I can still meet and bring the main. So we'll get this over to the board and then the board will come back and hook to here. 
Uh, and then this side goes to the fuse, which comes back to here. But then this is the, um, basically this is, this is supposed to go to the plates, which I can also run over the plates, but then this is supposed to go to the screens and I have to resolder something there, like a bonehead. I always tend to find a way to solder too early. Uh, so I stopped there when I realized that. And then from here, this will be B, or, or sorry, this is B screen, C, the phase inverter, D, uh, the tone stack driver, E is pixel, the plexi preamp, and then the other one will be the, the JCM 800 preamp. Um, so I've got the these in, and I also wired just a short little wire between the pins four and five, so that the when you connect the... Um, heaters in, they'll just already kind of be pre done on one side so I can quickly easily kind of poke it in the other one and move on. But, um, and then if you can see here, I'm trying something new, you know, everybody always talks about twisted wires and there was a big forum thread about how a lot of people have done a lot of builds without twisting their wires. And I even saw one, I can't remember if it was the Reeves space cowboy. But if you go back on one of my videos, you'll see one of them had definitely just straight heater wires. So heater can inject hum definitely, but usually as long as you have nice right angles away from the thing and keeping it, you know, clean and clear away from the tube, uh, quite a bit like this, I think that will solve most of the problems anyway. The rinding, it does help do what's called common mode rejection. I think it's the right term, but it basically pushes out the signal. Um, um, they, they cancel each other out basically. But in this case, there's such a low level of hum anyway, it shouldn't be a problem. I will find out, I guess it's not a massively high gain amp, uh, anyway, I don't believe, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this turns out. I think we'll be perfectly fine. But, uh, if for some reason that looks ugly, I might have to go back and redo those, but this is an experiment for me to find out how well it works with these kind of just straight heater wires. So I've got the heaters done on this side. I did wire in the, the, uh, voltage regulator and rectifier that comes off of the, the 6.3 volts that connects over. I also wired in my little led over here that comes across and down through there. Uh, so, and then, um, the that's going to be it for today uh, i'll come back tomorrow and finish the heater lines i'll jump the heater lines off of here to this first tube down to here and then i'll also connect a couple hundred ohm resistors to ground somewhere in this area and then my final step will be to uh, put wires that will come up out of these as well so that i can connect those uh, i'll have to look some of the layout stuff you'll be able to see when i do it um there's an actual like resistors and jumpers right on these some of these sockets so i won't even need to necessarily um bring wires up for all of them. So we'll see how that works out, of course, but that's the, uh, that's the gist of the plan. So, all right. So got quite a bit more done today in the process. I accidentally broke my fuse here. So I will have to, I've got some spare fuse cases around, I think. I mean, I could in theory try and glue this cause this is all plastic. The only part that's metal is the actual part that goes inside that would go in there that gets soldered to, which is actually this guy. Looks like, I think, I don't know. Anyway, um, this is normally sitting inside. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I broke it. I'll figure it out. I might be able to repair it. If not, I will just get a new one. I, for a fuse safety thing, maybe I don't want to be mucking with it. I should just put a new one in. But anyway, I'll be able to finish my heater wires. So as I mentioned, I ran this down for the 6.3 volts to power this, but then I also brought these wires down and I'm paring them down through and I'm just going to keep them out to the side. I've also done this first tube. The only thing that it, with it that was uh, above the standard here was I jumpered the grid input from this side, which will go up straight over to that side. But I've got the other, the, the, the two grounds, the two B pluses and the one grid inputs that will come up through to the top of the board. And I will repeat that for all of these. And then once those are all ready, I will pull them up. Now there's a couple of them I will be still putting, you know, some things on them. Like the second tube, there's a 100 picofarad capacitor that goes between the anode and cathode. Uh, and then on this one, there's going to be a, a resistor that just goes between the grids, sorry, the anode and the grid, and then jumps to the grid of the next one, because that's the tone stack driver and cathode follower kind of stuff. And then this one has a 47 picofarad cap across the middle, and it also has a um, jumper between the two sides of the, uh, uh, what would be the, I guess the anode and cathode, no, I guess those are both, anyway, yeah, those are both cathodes, uh, shared cathodes down, so... Yeah, I'll get those. That, that'll be my next phase really is to finish all those up because then that means at that point I will then just power in the, the power tubes as best I can run, and then I will be able to um, do the board and drop the board in. So we're getting uh, some pretty good progress now. Um, uh, I will replace the fuse that I broke at, at some point and then uh, I think that'll be uh, in good shape. Uh, as I said, the only thing that I did kind of silly was I, I soldered here before I should have. Um, so I will have to kind of sort that out a little later. Um, what is this go to? Oh, that was, that was what went to the fuse, but the fuse died. So yeah. So I have to, 
figure that part out when I re-put a new fuse in uh, because the fuse, this is the two leads that lead from the fuse. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, all right. It's coming along nicely. Thanks, everybody.